Got a new guitar. Bang now. In a while, look at this. This is a guitar that was uh, pieced together. It's what they call a parts caster. It's basically uh, a whole bunch of pieces put together by a, a local guy, um, somebody that I, I do trades with and stuff. We've got like 1980s DiMarzio, a super distortion humbuckers, a carbon neck, unknown body, some kind of generic pick guard. Uh, there's an arcade uh, button here, so you could do a kill switch. That Ben Allen thing. So you can hit a chord and then like. So that's kind of cool. Never had a kill switch. And um, it's got a really nice neck. It's like a beautiful neck. Kind of like almost flamed. It's not really flame, but kind of sort of a little bit of maple flame in there. Some odd neck, I don't know what it is. I guess it's a carving. Yeah, that's an old carving bolt-on neck. I guess from the 90s or something. But um, I like this guitar. There's a piece of a record there. That's an old LP. Somebody, well, not somebody, my friend Kevin did this, actually. He does that in all his guitars. He makes these things, so. Um, I liked it. It's, it's unusual. Each pickup has a... Uh, a volume control, like a, like a jazz bass. This one, on and off, this one, on and off. And then this is deactivated. It's only a, uh, a tone bypass, so you could totally uh, bypass your tone controls. No, actually, yeah, it doesn't do much. But uh, I could always uh, save the switch for something else, like if I wanna bring it back to original Strat setup. Let's hear how it sounds. something else here.
Okay, I'll wipe my new guitar. That tune is not as low as I like it. Let's talk a little bit today about the... Uh, we already uh, talked about my new guitar. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about uh, a new hat now, too. I forgot to use my arcade switch. Alright. One thing uh, I noticed that's brand new in the JJ Hat Center catalog, which is awesome. Uh, I'm sure you guys saw it. Did you guys take a gander at these yet? Look at that. Who's a boater guy? Who loves boaters? Who loves colors? You guys like wearing, you know, like really nice colors and matching up your summer outfits instead of just having like white straw hats, white, 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 you know, they're always white, off-white. Straws do come in colors. Um, this is a boater. We get these from Capus. Capus Headwear is a company that's located in New York. And they do great things to their Panama stuff. Um, this is not Panama straw. The straw is um, it's Shantung straw, which is uh, it's not exactly the same. I've heard it described as a uh, a hand woven straw at times, but it's not like Panama where they sit there and they knit it from the you know middle outwards. Um, it's uh, essentially more like a paper straw. Shantung is the same stuff that the Stetson cowboy hats are made out of. You know those really hard white sort of western hats that, uh, you know, like the really authentic Stetson westerns? Well, that's Shantung. And paper straw has connotations. It sounds like it's cheap or like, you know, because it can be cheap. A lot of the, you know, like when you see the stuff that they sell on the street for $10, you know, like the made in China fake kind of hats, those touristy... $10 hats or whatever they cost, uh, 15, 20 bucks. Those things are made out of paper straw and it's, it's like paper, you know, it's paper. They turn it into a kind of a straw and then they weave with it. Um, they spray it with paint and like with a, a lacquer, a waterproofing kind of lacquer, a little light, you know, not too heavy. You don't want a straw to be waterproof, otherwise it doesn't breathe. The idea is it's breathable, natural material. So you can put a little bit of Teflon, a little thin, light coat of rainproof, stain proofing, but it's not a straw hat for rain. Uh, the only straw that will take rain, like a champ, is palm. Um, it's two kinds of palm. The palm that, like you see, Western ha hats are made out of. It has a, a very hard, heavy kind of look. It's really thick, it's hard, it's heavy, and um, you could actually shape those with water too. You could roll it you know, tie it up with some string and wet it, you know, and it'll dry like that. But only palm leaf. Palm's the only straw you can do that to. Other straws, no rain, zero. Don't get any rain at all. If you get caught, you know, if it's a snap brim, flip it up, do all the good things upside down. If it's a flat brim like a boater, you do not flip it, obviously, because it doesn't flip, but you don't put it upside down either. You put it flat on the table. The idea of putting your hat upside down is so that this stays curvy and doesn't flatten out, but with a flat brim, you want it to flatten out, so it's okay to just set it flat on its brim on the table. Only boaters, boleros, and hats that are completely flat. I don't mean flat with like a pencil curl at the end or something, you know, like a gambler. Perfectly flat. Otherwise, if you want to preserve the curve, you leave it off the table. All right. The Shantung boaters are gorgeous. Uh, Shantung straw with a Teflon protected load, uh, layer, crown three and a half inch, that's normal. Uh, brim, two inch. Ribbon is two and a quarter, it's a very big ribbon, which is also very typical for a, uh, a boater. Um, boaters have the widest ribbons of all hats. Um, they come in blue. The straw looks very similar 
to a Panama boater. Capus also does a Panama boater, a hand-woven Panama, and we do that too from them. Now here's the thing with boater hats. Um, I don't know if you guys are boater guys or not, but you know, boaters are some of the most dressiest, snappiest, like, uh, you know, more formal kind of elegant looking straws that you can get. I mean, they're almost as good as you can get. You know, with formal hats, you know, you can wear top hats, bowlers, um, Hamburgs, those are formal hats, but what do you do for summer? You know, you're having a very fancy outdoor wedding or something in the summer, what do you guys wear? You know, felt looks too hot. That's what you wear, a boater. Boaters are awesome. They're really nice quality. Um, these are not going to be here forever, I doubt, but um, they're pretty nice looking. I mean, the blue is cool. I love, I'm liking the blue a lot. Um, there's the blue one. It comes in blue, brown, and black. Shantung boaters are pretty easy to take care of. You leave them in the box. Um, you could even take the ring out of the box and just put it in the box without the ring. Uh, I could show you what that looks like. Uh, you don't need a ring for a flat boater, but it'll probably come with one. Doesn't matter, you could leave it on. Um, if the brims ever get like, you know, out of shape, you could just put some books on it or something, weigh it down. If it gets too soft, you spray it with a little hairspray. You use the strong stuff, super hold hairspray, Rave, Suave, or Aquanet, whatever the drugstore has, get the hard formula and spray it on the brim, thin coat, but even. I generally do it on the underside and I cover up my sweatband. The sweatband must be covered with something. If you fill the, um, the inside of your hat with a big ball of tissue, like a bowling ball size ball of tissue, stick it in your hat, that will cover the, uh, the sweatband up almost like a head wearing it, you know. Um, I've never used painter's tape, I don't mess with that, but uh, generally just filling the crown with tissue is fine, or if you have a hat jack, put the hat jack in the hat, Okay, front to back, regular way. Just don't crank it open so you're stretching. Just crank it tight enough so it stays in there. You could hold the hat like a handle and stuff, okay? But you do not want the hat to stiffen up with spray in it with that hat jack in it. Um, in other words, put the hat jack in. That will cover up the sweatband in the front and the back. It'll also provide you with a handle to hold the hat while you're spraying. So spray the hat, the underside of the brim only, with a thin coat even thin coat, you know, from like a foot away, a couple feet, whatever, and then uh, leave the hat upside down to dry uh, with the uh, hat jack taken out. And um, you know, try to straighten the brim as much as you can while it dries, you know, just set it and uh, you're good, you know. It'll stiffen your brim. Now, as far as flattening it, once it's stiff, you could put some heavy, heavy books on it, objects and stuff like that. That's one way to, to make it work. Um, you must use a cloth between the books and the hat though. Put a bandana, some kind of thin cloth, cotton or something that's not wrinkled. Get the wrinkles out, make it very smooth and flat, and then weigh it down. Because if you just put a bunch of books or weights on top of your hat, um, it's going to make little lines and dents on it while it flattens it too. So cover first with a cloth, then put some dictionaries and stack them up and put whatever on top of that, and some dumbbells or you know, whatever you got that's heavy, or anything, a sewing machine, you know, way down the brim. Do one side at a time, you know, do the next side. And that that's works, um, but if your hat brim is too soft, you gotta stiffen it first. Um, always, always clean the felt when you stiffen. Get some packing tape, get all the dust off first. Sides also, then you spray. If it's a uh, straw, you know, I, I would make sure it's not dusty too, just to make sure, you know, you could use a brush or something. You know. And um, stiffening is something you might not have to do to way down the line. It's going to be like, um, you know, that's to fix problems. You don't really have to stiffen your hat. Usually it could take you a couple of years before you need that. But sometimes what happens is with straw hats, especially the type that have um, ribbon or cloth sweatbands. Um, it's happened a lot with bigger guys, guys who perspire a lot and stuff. What happens sometimes is the fibers get wet with persp perspiration, humidity, whatever's in the air, you know, um, and it makes the hat kind of loosen up. 
it's the fibers actually open a little um, and then when it dries it's almost like the felting process like when you make felt the fibers tighten up and interlock and get smaller so what you feel sometimes is when you're walking around with your sweaty hat it gets loose it starts getting loose and you're worried oh man I bought this too big and this and that but then when you get home it dries and it tightens up um, sometimes it tightens up too much but yeah then you put it on again and it loosens up all you need this is this is normal for some people um, it doesn't happen with every hat and it doesn't happen with every person it's kind of a phenomenon that happens with certain people in certain hats um, only straws but if it happens um, just keep your hat away from heat let it dry naturally uh, in a cool room is fine but just don't let it dry in the sun or someplace really hot like that I mean if you're running around and you're playing volleyball and you know and it's wet it's going to stay hot it's not going to dry in the sun you know but um, don't put it down like uh, on the table and let that wet hat dry really fast in the sun because it'll shrink back but it'll shrink too much so keep it in your house in a nice room temperature place and it'll shrink back it'll be fine but if you see this happening to you, you know your straws getting bigger that could happen to shanton um anything that's you know like that but um, it's just sort of a little tangent that was going on. If you guys are experiencing this, it's uh, it's not that unusual. Okay, um, let's get back to the boater. The boater is typically a formal hat. Um, I don't know if you guys know about the Italian boaters. Um, those are the original boaters. Um, the Italian boater is kind of like the ones that you see in the barbershop quartets. And um, let me see if I could. Uh, get it here. I'm going to put in Boater and see if we have it on in the catalog right now. Um, the Italian Boater generally, yeah, we call it the classic Boater. They usually come from Florence, uh, occasionally from Venice. They're made by Tessie. Tessie's the company that does all the straws for Borsellino. They've always done it. It's pretty much the number one straw company in Italy. And then when you see these, you know, original Boaters like that, they almost always come from Tessie. They are super thick, okay? They're real thick, and they're very hard, like, real hard. Um, they're not light. They feel almost like you're wearing a wooden hat or something. Um, they're so hard that, you know, this area doesn't stretch and flex to meet the shape of the wearer's head. It's hard, almost like a piece of wood or something. So they have to put what they call a floating sweatband inside. Floating sweatband is kind of like picture a regular like a leather sweatband okay but it's attached by little threads like a little net almost right like a little kind of netting of threads so that the whole sweatband is attached from the actual uh from the felt or for, you know or from the, the straw in this case so it's kind of like you know there's a little there's the straw then there's a little space where there's this almost looks like a little terry cloth band or kind of like a you know, like stitches, cotton, and then there's a sweatband. So um, what that does is it keeps the hard, sharp edges of the boater from jutting into your forehead and stuff. So it's like you're wearing the, um, the sweatband with a little shock absorber on it. So the sweatband stays put and then the hat moves kind of a little bit around, like a little shock absorber. It's the only way to really make a boater comfortable when it's made out of that stuff. The real boaters are super heavy. Um, they don't really keep you that cool. I mean, they keep the sun off you, but they're really heavy. They're not uh, for everybody. Um, they don't fit everybody, you know, because if you have a lot of depth, they don't work sometimes, you know, because there's no stretching, you know, you know, changing the depth on them. They're hard. Um, they're intense, you know, they're, they have that authentic look and like nothing has that look. It's super, super conservative and clean looking, you know, that's like that original boater. Um, we do these for the, uh, national hot dog eating contest every 4th of July. We sell like a whole bunch of them to the, the mayor's office or somebody like that. We sell them to SNL for all different skits. Um, these are the classics. The only thing is they're not comfortable. They're 175 bucks and they're very uncomfortable to be honest. Um, but they, nothing looks like it. It's the only thing that has that look. 
really thick, really intense. It almost looks like a corn cob pipe. You know that stuff that a corn cob pipe's made out of? It looks like that. It's like the same weave, but it's straw. Um, these things are so heavy that sometimes I recommend going with other boaters because uh, something like, let's say, the Panama boater. Okay, we get this from Capus. Panama boater is really nice. It's a little more youthful. It's hand woven, so that's real Panama, like a regular Panama hat. The top part here has been stiffened a lot, so the top is a little bit, but not not totally. It's more like the corners. Like the little corners of the top, they're real stiff. The middle of the crown is a little bit soft. The, the brim, you know, this hat is basically stiffened more than other Panamas to keep it flat, but um, it has that organic natural look like natural Panama does. You know, it's hand woven, it's Panama. But um, to me, these are less conservative, less starchy. It's not just for like the bow tie wearing conservative crew. Um, but actually, I've seen some really cool like dressers wearing boaters with some funky stuff too. It's not only like conservative. Um, these are, are more youthful, they're more functional, they're lighter, much lighter weight. They're a lower crown, thinner brim, and they have a little bit more more laid back look. Um, and then getting to the new one, the Shantung boater. That to me is really fashionable. That's like a, a totally new kind of boater. Um, it's nice that they're making a boater in colors. Um, I like it. I think this is really nice for somebody who's really into dressing, fashionable. You could find a great outfit for it. It comes blue, brown, and then black. I like them. Now, the Panama boater, I remember, ran a little small. I don't know about these, though. Um, again, I haven't really seen them in person, but I'm familiar with the Panama boater. That runs a little small. So if you're like a 57, you know, the medium might be a little tight, but if you're a 56, a medium would be good. Uh, a large is like a 58, small, you know, not really a 59. These go all the way up to double extra large. Um, I don't know how they run. It says double extra large is a 63. You can ask JJ's how they run when you order them. I'm going to assume they run kind of true to size, but uh, the Panama Boater version definitely ran tight. These are brand new. We should have just about everything in stock, I think. But there you go. The Shantung Boater is now 30% off, I think. Uh, I just saw a, uh, a sale. They have a 30% off all uh, full price hats. So that's basically everything that hasn't been cut in half yet, you know. Um, so it's 30% off, which is really, it's nice. I, I don't know how long it's going to be for, but uh, the code is March. I think you put in the word March when you order, and it takes 30% off the price. So, you know, do that now if you're going to order it. Uh, don't wait till the sale is over, because on new merchandise like this, um, they're not going to go any more than 30%. I'm actually surprised that they did. Um you know, older merchandise, I can see you want to clear it out, pay for new stuff. But yeah, newer stuff will never go 50 because then there's no profit. 50% is like basically cost. So um, there it is, the Shantung Boaters, guys. Oh, I'd also like to thank my friend Kevin, um, who hooked me up with this great new guitar. Um, Kevin is a uh, kind of a Long Island area guy in New York. More like, uh, you know, not out there on the islands, kind of closer to us, Queens, Long Island. Um, I don't know if he does Manhattan too, but if you need any work done on your guitars, he does uh, rewiring um, setups. You know, you could set your guitar up, you could put in one of these uh, arcade kill switches or, or whatever, you know, you need done. You want to put on some locking tuners or fix the intonation, change a pick guard. Whatever you can't do, Kev can do for you. Um, he drove right to my house, right to my driveway with this guitar. And um, he was super cool. It was a really uh, a nice, nice transaction. And 
we actually uh, did a trade. I wound up trading him a bunch of pedals that I don't use. Um, and he was just so super cool. I gave him like a, a strap and uh, a cable and uh, all this other stuff too, a couple of sets of string. Um, I was happy to meet him. It was uh, a pleasure meeting somebody from the area who seems to be uh, as obsessed with guitar nerdism as me. So it was kind of neat. I've been uh, a little bit uh, hibernating and quarantining for uh, exactly a year now. So it was it was good meeting a dude there. We kind of touched elbows with our parkas on, which was a little risky for me. Um, generally, I just air shake or something, you know? Um, but uh, this guy is solid, he's a nice guy, so if you need any work done and you're in the area, you know, that New York or Long Island area, let me know and, you know, um, I'll give Kev your email or something and you guys can talk, okay? So you don't have to stand aside so you can see all of my guitars. Actually, it's so I can see them. I'm looking in the monitor at them. Ah, oh, look how nice that one is. And that one, that one. That one, and I got one down there. I've got a ukulele down there. I gotta show that uke off a little more, huh? Just running out of space here. Yeah. It's not really enough space to show everything. But uh, I thought it was really weird having these two pickups on two different knobs like this. And uh, maybe it would ex you know, inspire me somehow, but uh, I don't know, maybe I'll give it back to him. He could change it up or something like that. He seemed like a really awesome guy.
see you guys. Thanks for tuning in.